Yo, so what's up, family? This is Yusha Asad from the With Great Care Movement, and y'all are watching Rap About TV. Bless y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Yo, what's going on? This is Rap About TV, man. This is a new year, man. And we got a special guest with us this morning, Yusha. I said that right? I make sure I said what's going Same on, right. my brother. Peace, King. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Off top, you know, I was doing a little research, and like I told you earlier, man, you gained a new fan. Nice. That surface track was dope, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, man, my question is, like, you working with the right people, you making the right moves. I see you on iTunes, you got your, you promoting, doing it. I, I, I don't want to say you're, 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 you're unknown, but you're known. You're known and unknown. You know what I'm saying? When I come, when I hear, you know, the D.C. area or the D.M.V. area, you know, in circles, your name is not popped up first. Or not, it's not said, and I wonder why, because you're dope. And now I want to, you know, hear your take on, you know, your journey in this, this music scene in the DMV. How do you feel about it? I mean, yeah, um, man, it's, it's a continual movement. You know, I'm not really from this area. You know what I mean? I've been here 10 years now. Um, and I claim this area only because my daughter's here, my family's here, I've taught here, I've been in the community here, I work with people here, I love upon the people here. You know what I mean? So I got stake, I got real estate in this place. Um, but because I'm not from here, I didn't grow up in them circles, you know what I mean? So trying to get into uh, the so-called circles that are, uh, are popping, um, according to, you know, the standards, it's, it's, that's not something I'm actually trying to do or want to do. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know what I mean? We, we, um, my goal is to make music that connects, inspires, and challenges people, you know what I mean? And uh, whoever takes to that, I find out how to get to them more. And then I figure out how to grab more people. At the end of the day, everybody knows what's real. So it's only a matter of time before my name starts popping up amongst that, that circle and that crowd, whether they let yeah. me in or I take it over. So man, like, okay, 10 years. How yeah. long, matter of fact, I mean, how long have you been rapping? Have you been rapping long, you know, longer than that? How long have you been, you know, rapping? Um, so you, since you started, did you move here rapping? Yeah, so I, I was, uh, I've been rapping since I was. Work back, you know, back at home. Like, for those who don't know, man, North Carolina, what part of North Carolina? I'm from a, a small town called Reesville, North Carolina. Um, I was born there, I lived there until I was about 9 or 10, and then we moved about 20 minutes south to Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And I finished out my school in Greensboro. But um, I started rapping when I was 7. You know what I mean? I, um, Raven Simone had this song back then. It was called, uh, it was like 92, 93. This is what little girls are made of. We had this talent show at my school, and I wrote uh, a counter to that called This Is What Little Boys Are Made Of. We won the talent show. This was it. Uh, and I've just been rapping ever since, man. So I rapped all throughout middle school and high school. I was a part of a, a rap group called Combination. Um, and then we teamed up with these other guys in the city uh, named Official. So in the city, we were Official Combination. So I was supposed to uh, and hoping to get a record deal out of high school. But in Greensboro, ain't you no know, record. Labels execs coming to yeah. North Carolina, so it's like it's harder to make that move. How is the do you keep an uh, eye on the music scene? That, you know, that I, I do, it? man. It? It's it's pretty good. I mean, it's it's growing. You know what I mean? And the, the funny thing is, like a lot of the dudes right now that are winning in North Carolina were the homies that I grew up with. So, you know, you got you got different markers. I definitely keep an eye on my boy um, Jay Gunn out of Durham. Uh, that's one of the homies, man. who talk pretty frequently. Um, and then my boy K.O. Bracey out of Greensboro, he actually went from being, uh, I guess, he moved more into like the Christian lane with his music, but he's, he's popping in that lane, he's doing what he's able to do, so that's good. Maybe most I continue to bless his endeavor. So people sure. still moving, but I know most of them because we used to do it together. Uh, Speaking of the Christian rap, bro, this is a little this quick disclaimer. I heard they got like um, Christian rap battles now. I, I have I haven't checked it out, but uh, Lil Lil told me yeah, he got Christian rap. Yeah, like a but it's you know Christian form. That's what's up. I gotta check it out. Though. I was yeah, pushing this thing. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah. So did you end up going to um, AT or school? I went to Winston Salem State University. I didn't want to go to A and T because everybody was going. I was going to be like, you know what I mean, high school regenerated type. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, Winston Salem State University. Yeah. 
So, okay, so like I said, I checked out Surface, man. Right? Mm -hmm. That track is dope for y'all don't know. Check that out on iTunes. What a project is that is that for? Because that's that's their single, leading single I see. So what what project you have coming on the way, you know? Yeah, we're working on an album right now called With Great Kid, the other side. Um the movement with Great Kid, you see the letters on the shirt, WGC, uh and the, and the logo on the hat. Dope shirt, yo. Yeah, yeah, so you, you got your, you know, you got your own brand, clothing line, and everything. Out of you? you got everything, man, from music to apparel to community service projects. We got educational endeavors. We got an event. You know what I mean? So we, the With Great Care brand is, mm -hmm. is bigger than just music. It's okay, a, okay, I get you. Yeah, I see you. Tell me a little bit more, okay? A little bit about more, you know, any show, upcoming shows you got going on. Um, if you, if you do. Yeah, so Revival is an event that we do, man. Revival happens every first Friday. Um, yeah. It's going to happen at Ivy City Smokehouse, right beside Club Love. Mm -hmm. So right beside Club Love, it's a smoke seafood space. But they got, other than the major concert halls like Echo Stage and Fillmore, like, they have probably the best performance space of a restaurant in the entire city. Um, so we teamed up with them to be able to present that event there. Revival is everything that the name sounds like. So the first time people would hear it, they'd be like, oh, is that church? Mm -hmm. be like, nah, but it's good for the spirit, bro. You know what I mean? So we intentionally put revival together so that we use the entertainment that we know our people love, we bring them to the space, and then while we're there, we give them some good word, we give them some good music, some good laughter, some good food, and while they're doing all of that, we slide black businesses right under their nose. Really? Yeah. So really? What, is, what are the days again? Every first Friday of the month. Every first Friday of the month. So we need to get it to come through and check that out. Sure. We need to yeah. come through and check that out. By Club Love. Yeah, it's right beside it. Like where Love is, it's like almost oh, it's it's separated by Alice. What's the name of it? It's called Ivy City Smokehouse. Ivy City Smokehouse. Okay, I think I know. Yes. Yeah. That it, I always look, I always drove past there on my way home. And I always look at it. Is this right here? I, I see it as a smokehouse. I'm like, I'm gonna stop through there when I'm a barbecue one day. You know? right, right. Yeah. I it was a barbecue spot, right? The owner is a community dude, man. He's he's okay. real invested in that entire Ivy City community. So beyond, and, and I have to throw this in there, beyond what we do for revival, every first and third Monday, they do a free dinner and movie in that space for kids and their parents. Mm -hmm. So you know, you bring your children through, they feed the kids and the parents for free, free movie. Don't matter who you don't have to have nothing to go. You know, when we first started it, they said, hey, we can work with y'all as long as y'all do this for us. He's like, what is it? Bring us families to feed. So, you know, it's easy. I mean, we connected. Man, we got to really, we got to go. We got to go through yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. like They're really place. invested in growing that entire community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, they need more, they need more, definitely need more people and attention for that. Oh, right. you know something like that? That's super big. Yeah. yeah, especially in that community right there, too. Mm -hmm. So, they come. That's crazy. Cool. Okay, cool. Before um, we jump into, like, you know, I got, you know, a couple of questions for, you know, for the shop and whatnot. Um, any of the last things you want to, you know, tell the people, uh, where, when they can get you, the website, you know, anything else you got coming out that you, you pushing? Yeah, yeah. So, um, my name is Yusha Asad. That's Y-U-S-H-A-A-S-S-A-D. Mm -hmm. um, you can find that at YushaAsad.com. Um, it's bigger than music, y'all. You know what I mean? We got a lot of things going on. So, from what we're doing and with the music to revival, you gotta come to revival, it's popping. Um, Real quick, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. For anybody who wants to, you know, get down with your team, how can they, can they, you know, are you looking or how can they get, you know, um, how is that, you know, are you looking for any help, any of that nature? I mean, really easy is, um, if you want, it depends on what you want to be a part of, you know what I mean? If you look at the entire With Great Care movement, you can kind of understand what you want to do. You can always hit us at withgreatcarellc at gmail.com. If you want to be a part of Revival, you can do wgcrevival at gmail.com. Um, if you just want to help push the music forward, then email me at my, email my management company at uh, DCLA, uh, info at dclaoperations.com. But we got a lot going on, bro, and we always looking to grow. But the number one thing, the number one way to connect to us, be working. Yeah, we'll find you. Oh, All right, well, look, when we get back, then we're going to jump in some more things. Uh, DJ, take me out, man. All right, yeah, we're back. Um, now, you know, I want to dive in a little bit, you know, 
Like I said earlier, man, this episode is kind of inspired. My question is for Diddy. Is Diddy. He had a, uh, uh, I guess someone said rap, but he said he had a spiritual moment where he just looking around and just, he just see too much coonery and buffoonery going on. And it kind of was prompt from the Chris Brown and the Soldier Boy. My question is, what do y'all think about that distraction and and, uh, and Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather, you know, in the, you know, in the mix and promoting it? And it's a big kind of unusual. On that you know, like I think it's a, some type of marketing scheme for I don't know what's coming, what's about to happen between these two dudes, but somebody about to do something. Soldier Boy about to drop an album. Yeah, somebody about to do something. Cause this is real. I think it's a ridiculous thing. But could you I feel like we're going into a, a crucial point. In this new year, you know what I'm saying? We're coming, we days away from Trump coming in, and, and in the outside world, there's a lot going on as far as foreign policies and everything. And to have this distraction, man, I think it just it, it blows me a little bit. Um, you got to take on it, and keep. I mean, my first my first response is distraction to who? Like it ain't distracting me. You know what I mean? And, and I think it's only a distraction to people who pay attention to it. So that's my. That's my perspective, but in a, in a me understanding the mass perspective, mm -hmm. I'm with KB, man, something, they about, somebody about to drop an album. I mean, and think about that shit, like, you was in middle school, bro. You was in middle school or high school. If there was about to be a fight going down, everybody knows that if you tell everybody about the fight and there's a big crowd building up, then there's a hype about it, but the fight ain't gonna really have an opportunity to go down because it's gonna be broken up before because it's too much noise. If you really wanted to get at that person, you go up on them on silence and then you pop off. So the fact that they making all this noise already breaks the cardinal rule of how you really get at somebody. So we already know it's not about to be no real beef. Yeah. They plot and they plan and they trying to make some money somehow by breaking attention to what they about to do. If you falling for it right now, it's because you ain't got nothing to do with your life. Now, the Diddy thing, that's, he's his own coon within himself <laughs> to be calling anybody else out, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, uh, I mean, you so, so like in the yeah. and that's what they say in the comments. Under, but Diddy don't people don't get a chance to wake up and kind of you know after looking at yourself in the mirror like dang I done wrong. I need to change my you know. It's not. It's not that like you can you can definitely have some type of redemption. I guess you know what I'm saying. It, but uh, the, well, the fight is is a coon fight within itself. You know what I'm saying, and it is a publicity stunt within itself. But Diddy calling somebody out is my issue. Like, you still have, it's like, his well, redemption moment why not is so coming much? off of somebody else. All right, so, 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 you, so you don't, so, so if a crack, a former crackhead come to you, tell you don't smoke crack, are you gonna take heed to that? Because he's been through it. Yes. So Diddy kind of the same, you know, the ones that really, like you said, he you call him, you know, he, he, he's, he's in it, he's, he's been in it, and he's done his wrong. But why not listen to him? He, I know he has wisdom in that. Because he's not, because he's, he's talking about somebody else's situation. A crackhead will be coming to me telling me about their life and their experience. Yeah, but Diddy, Diddy is a businessman. Mm -hmm. So Diddy knows that whatever's created will be replicated. Because we're, 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 we're people who repeat, right? So he knows that if, if artists start using this type of buffoonery or this coonery to sell records, more people gonna start doing it because they're gonna be like, oh, it works. Mm -hmm. But that that degenerates the whole process. Whether it degenerates the people or not, it degenerates the process of how you sell albums or how you sell records. So now you mean to tell me I gotta set up a three to four month bullshit ass fight or bullshit fight for three to four months to sell an album now? As a record executive, I don't wanna have to do that. But if they keep letting that happen, then what you do is the generation of the kids who are coming up who are watching this, now that's, good, that's what they're going to expect. In order for you to be hot, you got to do something stupid three to four months before your album drop. Yeah. yeah. And he, he was kind of talking about hip-hop in his rap, you know what I'm saying? He said, because this how hip-hop don't feel, you feel like he's scared for hip-hop when we work for hip-hop. I mean, yeah, you got, you got that Kodak interview where he goes on to the most, probably one of the uh, biggest uh, media places to have that type of interview. Yeah, it, it looks a little foolish, but I don't really care about that fight. The minute I, I heard Soldier Boy say, man, Chris Brown's still my brother, and this, that alone, period, 
period for me right there when he said that. You know what I'm saying? It's not no fight. You don't fight your brother. Point blank, period. So that right there, I was like, okay, well, I don't care about the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know I know what it is. The minute he says that, you know what I'm saying? It's good for money, it just ain't good for bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, that's the whole premise of the Which Great Kid movement. Like, if, if anybody asks me, what does Which Great Kid mean in business? It means long-term sustainability. What they're doing is not creating long-term sustainability. It's creating a quick dollar. Mm -hmm. But they're not building anything that's going to last. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's, that's affecting hip-hop because the impressions will last on the youth. And that's more powerful than anything. Mm -hmm. But their ability to continue to make money won't because once the fight is over, nobody cares anymore. Have you have you came across a little resistance because you because you, you in your music you, you are about change and positive positivity. Have you come uh, um, to any resistance yet so far? No. Okay. No. No. I think artists. I think artists think that if they if they talk positive, they'll meet with resistance. I've been met with nothing but open arms. You know what I mean? It don't spread as fast, yeah. but when it spreads, it stays. You know what I mean? I can do something, I'm smart enough to do something real stupid tomorrow that could probably make me blow up in 30 seconds. Yeah. But that's not gonna last. So you build, here's the thing, if you feed people, like people know spirit, people know energy, if you feed people correctly, they always gonna be with you. I put it in a song, like you, you hook people like that. Uh, one song I gotta say, uh, born to a preacher, but raised by a hustler. So I know how to reach the people and turn them into customers. But what I give the people feels like royalty. So what I get back is called long-term loyalty. So I'm gonna give you something real. And that's what's gonna stick. I'm gonna be doing shows until the day I drop, bro. I hope you that's 60, 70 years from now. Do you have a little, you got a little freestyle for us today? Or a poem or something, or lyrics? Do you, uh, if you? I mean, you know, I can always drop something, man. But Pete, before we go, get into that. Do you have any, could you, any, anything you want to throw out there? I mean, since the new year, it's been a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Uh, definitely, I wanted to talk about uh, Don and Ruth uh, being charged with murder and uh, con convicted of it. Um, and uh, Steve Harvey, you touched on it earlier, but Steve Harvey and, uh, and DL Hughley calling them out. I kind of feel like, uh, again, we are focusing on like, like, I remember you was talking about uh, Lil Wayne and what he said about Black Lives Matter, and I remember the conversation I was saying. We looking to the wrong people to listen to what really going on in the world. Okay, So I agree, I got a question there. I got a question for both of y'all there. What do you, because, like, again, I'm a new, I like your music, I'm a fan now. What, what do you think that, what is the new business model? What do you think should be the new business model to get you know, the minds like, you know, like like us, you know, to the masses, uh, instead of the ones, like you said, the ones that they put in, for, in our face. What do y'all think the new business structure model? Well, the, the, the business model, and that's what I push it. We talked about my single circuit from earlier. So I was like, you know, what's the premise of that song? It's, this is the new way, right? You got a more conscious generation of kids who are coming along. It's like, all right, cool. We want, we want to actually hear some substance. We're tired of the bullshit. We want some substance. But we still want to crank. So what you gotta do, you gotta be able, and it's my saying again, I come to give you what you want, so that you'll want what I come to give you. You want a crank? Here's a cranking ass beat. But you want some substance? We can put this on. And then most artists right now who are out, they not smart enough to be able to give you substance, but also make you feel like it ain't substantive at the same time, because nobody wanna be preached to, right? So who is the artist who is articulate enough, smart enough, to write a song that makes you feel like it's pure entertainment, but at the same time, drop consciousness. So if you are an entertainment person, you just wanna turn up, you can turn up to it. But if you like knowledge, you can listen to it. Everybody loves it. Who is that artist? Me. My man, and then and on that note, man, you got some balls for us. It's, it take us out. Yeah, we uh, All right, you say, uh, pull up my, you say, uh, I heard him say, I heard him say, you should, what's the good word for the day? You say, you know you like to teach to them. Yeah, you know they love it when you preach to them. Nah, see, preach is what you do with talking, teach is what you do with walking, and I'm feeling like a movement. So I just sit back in the cut. My movement is observation. I'm watching you, watching us. We make a move left and they move left. We make a move right and they gon' move right. So what makes you think you maze like us? You don't get the people dazed and amazed like us. You ain't get the ace of spades, gold chariot. You ain't get the gold chariot, ace of spades like us. Carried by two fairies in a cage like us. 
Still guessing how we became like us? You don't get it? Bitch, we was made like us. You don't know the people enough to catch the wave like us. Since 99, we never had these waves like us. We smart, nigga. You never had these grades like us. And you don't praise and you don't never feel this grace like us. You talking race without a pace like us. The sun ain't kissed you enough to have a face like us. I told my niggas, find niggas with a face like us and get them straight. We're about to run it. They gotta be laced like us. Y'all, we made this plan at the kitchen table in Northeast like the first supper. And we knew it then that we had less table and more seats we knew. It was an all-out struggle for more to eat Still we came together Figured we could win a park or rain together Four kings at a table just putting our brains together It's plain to see the money pours And you ain't dancing in this rain like we mm. Rap about TV, man You still came through, I appreciate that, man any last words? Again, tell them the website where they can get you, holler at you at. Youshasad.com, that's Y-U-S-H-A-A-S-S-A-D.com. With Great Care Movement, we simply say don't strive to do great things, we do everything with great care, purpose, and intention. It's our time, and if you're with us, it's your time. Yo, man, rap about TV, the group chat, man. With no purpose, no purpose. They high as hell on a trap piece, like they sipping that purple. Sipping that, sipping that. Got enough for the trap piece, like they chasing them birds. We just watching life as entertainment. Children get amused and imitate them. Man, they think they clowns and shit is crazy. Jumping off a couch, these kids are crazy. Running through the streets, these kids are crazy. High on cotton candy, like they blazing. Messing with the lions, smacking cages. Police come out with whips and try to tame them. Uh. Circus come to town, we just want some fun. Everybody go.